We are two sisters with few fears and great ambition, ready to take on the world one ocean at a time. And welcome to another episode of Sailing the Far Side with your two favorite sisters. At least we hope. We hope. If not, maybe one day we will be. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, so we are off leaving Marco. We had quite the farewell from um, everybody. Yeah, Mama, Mama made sure to uh, make it to the snook so that everyone was cheering and everything. It was pretty cool. Put us in a pretty good mood for our sail. Um, it was a night sail, so we made it through the night and made it just in time for our haul out the next day. Good luck, girls! Love you! From Marco Island, silently through the canals into Marco River, We're going to Key West for a haul out, and on to the Bahamas. Good luck, girls. Love you. Mama. All right. Off we go. On our way to Key West. We're going to haul out and uh, take off again. Boat's all ready. Watch wind starting to pick up. The seas are too. Should be fun. We're headed to Key West. We're going up between six to nine knots. Speed of room. Holding about eight knots right now. Just got off her watch. She, we reefed the main, we put a reef in the main about. Wind's picking up to about 20, uh, 20 miles per hour, so we got some good wind speed. We also kept holding the head sail a little bit. We have our stay sail up as well, so we got a good amount of sail out. Um, got some good speed, good power. But yeah, I just got off my nap shift, so I'm about to make myself some coffee.
So once we arrived at the yard, we did have a, I believe it was a northeast wind, and it made it a little difficult. Um, our tad bit. Yeah, tad bit difficult. So when we haul out, we had to take the back stay off. We tried the, we did take the roll of furling off the previous time that we hauled out, but that proved to be a lot more difficult than just taking the back stay off. So that way we can get lifted out of the water. Um, so mm -hmm. in order to, for that to happen, we had to back into the slip. And with the wind that was blowing, we had about 15 to 20 knot winds. So it did make it difficult, but um, Papa really showed us how it was done. Yeah, he really Captain Ronald it. I mean, I <laughs> wish we had it on video, but everyone was yeah. thoroughly impressed. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Wait, Sasha, push it out. I need to. Yeah, I need to. I need to move this thing. <laughs> okay, we're good. Yeah, that's not a good place for concrete. All right, so the first thing that we had to do was pop all the blisters and scrape off all the barnacles. Uh, there weren't that many blisters because Sasha took care of a lot of those last, or yeah, two years, two years ago, ago we hauled out around the same time mm -hmm. and uh, we did a huge blister job. So that was our main focus that time hauling out. So this time around, we didn't have nearly as many, which was nice because they, uh, they do make the job a little more difficult mm -hmm. as uh, those sailors uh, out there know. But yeah, and then the other thing I learned was don't sand off the barnacles. Just scrape them off if you can because it makes it a lot easier and a lot less sanding. So today we are cleaning, gonna sand. Sasha's I'm, popping some blisters. Yeah, we found that if we get all, all the loose material that the blisters hold up a lot better. Last time we hauled out, the boat was littered in blisters. Yeah. And uh, they all look great, so we're going to do the same thing this time. Yeah, so just going to get all this green stuff off. And then I'll probably start sanding. Sanding the bottom. But uh, hopefully we'll have her put back in the water on Monday. Another big project was we had some extra leaking from our rudder shaft and last season we did do a lot of um, repair, well somewhat repairs on the rudder shaft. This time around while we were out of the water we took advantage of being able to put a new hose off so I removed the whole steering unit, the stuffing box, and we replaced that hose below the stuffing box to hopefully have that seal better. We put brand new clamps on it and put it all back together and so that actually solved pretty much solved the problem. Mm -hmm. um, just every once in a while you have to have those hoses replaced, you know, and uh, those clamps go bad as well. So that was one big project. So while Natalie was out there sanding the hull, 
Uh, I was in the runner shaft compartment yet again. <laughs> to put it all back together. This is the stuffing box. Just locking the nuts together. Right, actually, right, and then the, I need the rudder to go left. Yeah. More. 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 Okay, good. Now I just have to figure out where it is. Once she was done with the locker, she was able to start helping me with the bottom. Okay, so now that we have all of the spots epoxied, as you can see, um, that's where all the blisters were. The fiberglass was exposed, so we had to put some marine tech or epoxy over it just to give it a little extra protective layer. So now that um, that's done, the epoxy is dry. Natalie's gonna go around and sand down all these spots. Um, to make them, let, you know, so they're nice and smooth with the hull of the boat. And then I'm gonna go around and put some two-part primer over it, so that way the anti-fouling paint will stick on top of those, um, those spots or patches. Sasha, what's going on here? Um, just putting some primer sealer over all the patches that we did on the um, the blisters, and then I'm also priming all the port, all the through holes because this is made of, I believe, brass, and um, the anti-fouling paint doesn't stick to brass, so you prime, you put some primer over it, and then it'll stick, um, just for some some spots where the paint chipped off, and then just priming any spots that look bare, give it a nice sealant coat. And then uh, time to put some bottom paint on. The rope at the end of far side. <laughs> it's the swing around, but what is the real meaning? Well, we had a cat when we were kids, and she'd uh, fall. She'd like to jump on top of the bimini when at night when she was playing, and a couple times she fell in the water. And uh, luckily, we you know we were able to notice before anything bad happened. But we put this on there so she could climb her way back on the boat if she ever fell in again. And, after we put this up, of course, she never fell back in the water. So now we just leave it there as like a little memorabilia and just something fun. We can swing on it in the water, try to climb it up. Climb up. All right. Now, time to start painting. Now that we put two coats of the primer on the, over all the patches that we put on with the epoxy, um, we've let them dry about two hours in between. Um, we're ready to put the first coat of bottom paint on. So, yeehaw, let's go. What are you doing, Natalie? Painting. Painting. I am not getting any black stuff on me, so that is why I'm wearing my hazmat suit. All right. We got a couple coats of paint on the bottom 
uh, had that dry. And in the meantime, we got to do something really cool. We got our level one freediving certification through Freediving International Instructors mm -hmm. uh, up in Marathon, which was awesome. And Through we're, Formula Freediving. Yeah, and we're very, very, very glad that we did it because we learned quite a few safety um, aspects about freediving, how to do it safely, and um, just it's a very beneficial class for those of you who enjoy being in the water, freediving, scuba diving, swimming, anything highly recommended. <laughs> There are three portions to the uh, class. We started off in the classroom, learned everything in the classroom. Then we moved to a pool, which was about 12, 13. 10, 10 feet. Was it 10 feet? Mm -hmm. All right, it was about 10 feet deep. We learned techniques and everything in the pool. We went from techniques to safety to static. Static is where you hold pretty your much hold your, you can. Yeah, hold your breath for as long as you can. Can you play a job first? I'm a visual learner. <laughs> Slowly bring your hands up, slowly, slowly, slowly bring your feet up beneath you, and on the tap, you can come up. Breathe, breathe. The following day, we went out on a they took us out on a charter boat. We went about four miles offshore to the blue water. They put a line in the water with a weight on the bottom, of course attached to a float at the surface, and we did some line dives. And what we did in the pool, we also did in the open water. And then we the just had a rope. Yeah, the main thing with the line dive was the depth. So the pool was all the technique, safety, all that. In the open water, same thing, but they also wanted to teach us to go deep. So we both made it to uh, 20 meters. Hello. Hi. How are you? How are you today? Not bad. Super I'm excited. Are you Thank good? you. Oh, uh, you won't even have to. We'll just jump in. <laughs> so, yeah, just kind of like... And then you see how that... Oh. And there it just disappears. Mm -hmm. Okay. Same thing for the other side. We're cleaning the bill. Oh, wow. Yeah, there you go. Oh. Hey, Jake. Once I'm ready to go, is I like to bring the, the weight to the hips so that once I do my entry, I'm already facing the line. Okay.
And then we passed. <laughs> we passed. Yay. Officially um, level one free divers. With flying colors. Thank you again, Enchante. You yeah. were amazing. After all that fun, we had to get back to work. And work was putting the last coat of paint on the boat, on the bottom of the boat. And then uh, kind of doing a couple touch-ups here and there. I went around and touched up the green stripe at the top of the um, deck. And then I also buffed the boot stripe. Um, the green bootstripe at the bottom. Finally, we were all done and we were ready to splash. Or as ready as we will ever be. Yeah. As you guys know on a boat, you're never fully ready. No. So <laughs> we were as ready as we could be to splash and head out to the Bahamas. Mm-hmm. Today's the day. We're going in the water. We're not ready, but we're ready. Thanks again for watching guys always appreciated um please let us know what you think it's always great to have you guys following along on our adventure mm -hmm. especially through all these crazy projects that we have to get done but hey boating Someone's is not all sunshine and rainbows is that the same sunshine and sexy bathing suits <laughs> no not either but uh there's the glamorous part of boating and there's the non-glamorous part of boating and we're giving you guys a little taste of both we want to say a special thank you to all of our patrons, especially our honorary El Capitans. Including our first ever El Capitan, David Howie. Love you, man. You're awesome. Uh, Corey, our favorite pool guy. Tim Rainey. Thank you very much. And Joshua Adams. We really appreciate your guys' support. But to all our other patrons, you are not forgotten. We also very, 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 very much appreciate everything you guys have done for us and making this possible for us to be yes. able to continue and that's it. so that's it um, thanks for watching make sure to like subscribe if you haven't already uh, continue following and that we are putting out videos every Thursday at 5 if you are one of our patrons you will get an early glimpse 
at the video, which will come out at Wednesday at 5 p.m. Um, but again, thanks guys for watching. Uh, we'll see you next time on Sailing, Sailing the Far Side. And uh, the fun stuff is on its way. No, that's not good. Oh. Thanks again for watching, I mean, guys. I was wiping my mouth.